Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you to Millennial Media for putting on this great event. And thank you to Christian for sharing uh, some key learnings. Very insightful. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm glad that many of you guys have heard of App Annie. Uh, for those of you guys who haven't, uh, this basic, what we basically do is we provide market data or mobile market data uh, and analytics. So uh, without explaining it much, oh, just to give you a quick heads up, uh, we are a San Francisco-based company. We're actually dual headquartered in Beijing and San Francisco, and we're moving um, our headquarters all to San Francisco. So with that, let me go ahead and get started. So what I want to do here is I want to uh, take us through a couple of things. First of all, uh, I want us to answer the question, should we be investing in mobile? I mean, it's... It might, it might be funny, I mean, we're all here for mobile, but I think uh, it makes sense to take a step back and look at the data uh, to see what it tells us. Uh, next, uh, I wanted to, if you were to launch an app today for the first time, uh, what strategy would you take? What country strategy should you take? So we'll touch, up on, uh, we'll touch on that. Uh, I also want to talk about emerging markets, the trends that we're seeing there, and also uh, in terms of your monetization strategy. Uh, what is effective? What is the data telling us? And lastly, uh, iPad I optimization. It's very interesting. Uh, I think you guys are going to be very, uh, it's actually very fascinating when you see the data behind that. So should we be investing in mobile? Uh, I think, so if you take a look at uh, the growth in, um, in uh, just online advertising overall, uh, and you compare 2012 to 2013, what you'll see is that for the PC, uh, from, uh, from 2012 to 2013, you see about 10% year-over-year growth. Uh, but if you do look at mobile, you actually see a lot more growth from 2012 to 2013. And in 2014, we, it, we're not done through the year yet, we actually see more growth. So we see no, more than, no less than 50% growth uh, for uh, the mobile platform. One interesting thing, though, is that if you compare mobile browsing to mobile apps, you see that mobile apps is, you see actually more significant growth for mobile apps. So uh, uh, referring both to in-app advertising and also app store revenue. So I want to talk a moment about app stores just in general. Uh, most of you guys all know the two dominant platforms are Apple and Google. Uh, and in Q2, uh, for downloads, Google Play led iOS by 60%. Uh, the first time we noticed this trend was Q3 of last year. Uh, and Google Play barely just uh, passed, um, uh, passed iOS. Now, we, we've been monitoring this closely, and we actually don't, we, we not only see this trend continuing, we see this trend accelerating. But for app revenue in Q2, we actually see iOS leading Google by 80%. So the key takeaway here is this, that both strategies are working. Uh, Google Play's mass market strategy of any device, any place, anywhere, anytime, uh, that's, it's very effective and it's working. And iOS's strategy of, uh, of having a high margin, high end strategy, that, that actually is working as well. Both strategies are very effective and they're dominating the App Store market. Let's take a quick moment to talk about games. Uh, the reason is because games represent about 40% of all downloads on both stores. And so understanding game, the gaming category, actually gives us a lot of insight, not only just into games, but uh, categories outside of games. So if you look, compare July of last year to July of this year, uh, Google grew about 60 to 70%. That's, that's dramatic growth. But if you look at games revenue, you see iOS grew about 60 to 70% and led Google Play uh, by about 40% in terms of revenue. Now, I mentioned that 40% of all downloads overall come from uh, the games category. Now, what's really interesting here is if you look at the percent of revenue that comes from games, you see in July, you see about 80% last year came from the games category. And this year, it increased to 90% uh, for, on the Google Play platform. But what's most interesting here is that you actually see a decrease in the percentage of revenue that came from games for iOS. Now, I don't know if I can go back here really quickly. Um, it, it, actually, I won't go back. I'll just, if you recall the previous slide, um, iOS games revenue actually went up, six, grew 60 to 70% year over year. So it's not that uh, games revenue is slowing down. 
But if you look at the percentage of revenue coming from games, it actually decreased, which means that categories outside of games grew faster than 60 to 70%. Uh, this actually is a very good sign uh, for both gamers and also uh, those who um, participate outside of games. There we go. Uh, one last um, data point I want to touch on is, um, on, it, it is on gaming, is if you look at the revenue, so we're, we're taking Q2 revenue and we're comparing this year to last year. Uh, for iOS, you see that there, once again, is 60, 70% growth, and for Google Play, you have over 2x growth. So that's all substantial, but if you look at consumer spending for gaming optimized handheld, that, sh uh, that actually uh, shrunk close to 30%. So what you see is really the two platforms, iOS and Google Play, really being solidifying themselves as the de facto platform in which we should invest, which we should research and uh, definitely pay attention to. So let's say you were, um, let, let's say you were releasing an app today. Uh, what should your country strategy be? And what is the data telling us? Uh, first of all, the, the, the first takeaway is that uh, you definitely should have a strategy for the top three markets in, in terms of revenue. And we'll, we'll get into downloads here uh, in just a second. But in terms of revenue, Japan, uh, Japan US, South Korea, uh, and China are markets that you absolutely cannot, uh, cannot ignore if monetization is uh, top of mind for you. One of the things I do want to point out here that's really interesting and, and a trend we've been seeing is if you take a look at Germany, uh, they're number six on the list here. Uh, you see Google Play growing substantially in terms of revenue and catching up with iOS. So, uh, and one other thing I do want to point out is you, you may notice China. Uh, there is no Google Play, uh, there is no Google Play data. And that's because, and most of you guys may already know this, uh, Google Play, um, China does not use Google Play. Uh, they use, they have uh, three primary local stores that they use for monetization and distribution. So as a result, you're not seeing Google Play data here. However, the Android market in China is, is uh, very, very large. When you do look at downloads, so we, we, we just, we were looking at uh, revenue, and when you look downloads, and this is worldwide for the month of July, uh, you see that the U.S. is definitely the biggest market. And one of the things you'll also notice are the emerging, or the BRIC countries and the emerging markets, how, how uh, dominant they are. They are in the top 10 when it comes to Google Play downloads. Uh, now, there are actually a lot of reasons for that. Um, some, first of all, these countries have a very uh, large population. Uh, you also have this huge phenomenon of people getting their first connected device. And you have a lot of uh, feature phone users who are upgrading. You have a lot of people with older smartphones upgrading. And right now, they're going through what I call the download wave. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll actually get into trends here in just a moment. Uh, so when we look at trends, specifically for iOS, uh, there really, in the month of July, there, there really were no huge takeaways other than Brazil. Uh, so most of you guys know there was a significant world event in Brazil a couple of months ago, the World Cup. And what you'll continue to see Brazil as a recurring theme here. Uh, so we anticipated uh, an increase in downloads and revenues. That's expected when you have millions of people coming into your country. Uh, what we did not expect is after the World Cup for, the, uh, for these trends to not only continue but to actually increase. So we're seeing something special in Brazil. Uh, and that's definitely something as an app publisher you definitely want to be mindful of. When it comes to iOS revenue, there's just two key takeaways here. China is now the third largest iOS revenue market. You, you absolutely cannot avoid them when it comes to your monetization strategy. And uh, Taiwan has jumped into the top 10. So those two countries are definitely markets that you want to uh, watch out for. Uh, we'll look at the exact same thing for Google Play. Uh, you, once again, Brazil is number two. Downloads worldwide, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. And you look at all the brick, and, uh, brick countries uh, or the emerging markets, uh, you see they're once again in the top 10. They're all jumping into the top 10. <clears throat> now, I know we all focus on, um, we all want monetization, but one thing to consider is that the, the download wave always comes before the revenue wave. And in these countries right now, you have people downloading hundreds of apps a week. 
I, I mean, when's the last time you downloaded 100 apps in a week? Uh, it just it doesn't happen in, in the developed world. Uh, and there, so the cost of user acquisition is very low. So what you, so if you, as an app publisher, one of the things to focus on is investing in these countries because the cost of UA is so low. Uh, and definitely the monetization wave is coming and it's important to get in front of that and also in front of your, uh, and get ahead of your competitors uh, in these markets. So let's look at business models. Uh, there's three primary ones. There's uh, freemium, uh, there's paid, and there's uh, paidmium. Uh, and if you look at the data from 2012 to 2013, uh, you see that in-app advertising definitely grew. So that, these are trends that we're observing year over year. Uh, freemium also grew significantly at 211%. And both paid and paidmium decreased year over year. Now this year, we're not, uh, we're not done with 2014 yet, but we see all these trends not only continuing, but accelerating. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, let me actually go here so that, so that you can see the composition by business model. So in 2013, 83% of all apps uh, leveraged the freemium model. But that rep, those 82, that, the 82% actually represented 92% of all revenue. So you see, you, you see the composition in 2013. In 2014, we actually see this trend continuing. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples of people who've done this uh, very well, uh, who've leveraged the freemium model. So WhatsApp, I mean, we all know they got acquired by Facebook. But uh, before they got acquired, uh, they transitioned to the freemium uh, model and they were wildly successful. Uh, one of the reasons why Facebook had to pay such a hefty premium is that at, when they transitioned to the freemium model, they essentially became, um, they were able to sustain themselves financially. Skype also transitioned to the freemium model. However, they were acquired by Microsoft. Uh, they were also successful and they leveraged the App Store. I do want to give a shout out to EA yeah. because, <laughs> uh, because uh, FIFA 13 was the number one paid medium. And by paid medium, just, just so that you guys know, it's where you purchase an app in order to use it and then there's more in-app purchases. They had the number one paid medium app uh, in 2013. Uh, and in 2014, uh, they decided to transition to the freemium model. And that, that app, FIFA is now even more wide. So they're basically uh, enjoying the rewards of transitioning into this model. Uh, they also did it with Real Racing. So Real Racing 2 was paid medium and they transitioned to freemium and uh, they, this app literally skyrocketed. So it's, you see up here, it's never too late to switch your business model. I think the data is clear as to which uh, um, monetization model is effective. Now, I can't tell you, so I, I, I have an iPad. So my company issues me an iPad, an iPhone, and a MacBook. Right? And I actually used to work at Microsoft before and Amazon. So it's, it's a little funny coming from a complete Microsoft world and then going to a complete app, uh, a Mac or Apple world. Um, I can't tell you, I, I use my iPhone and I, you know, I get apps that I like. And um, so I, I write, I, I live in San Francisco. So I write 47 minutes into San Francisco every day and I come back, uh, come back home. And I, during that time, I download apps and I play it because that's basically what we do. We have to understand the market. And uh, there are a lot of times I discover apps that I really like, but when I go to my iPad, I, I, I notice that the app isn't there. And that's probably, as an app publisher, that's a question that everybody asks. You know, do we, do we develop on iOS or do we develop on Google Play? What countries do we go for? And on, I, on iOS, do we create an iPad optimized uh, version? Well, let's take a look at the data and see what it tells us. One out of every five downloads on iOS comes from iPad. So that's 20%. And in the US and in China, uh, it's greater than 20%. But what's even more interesting is when you look at the revenue that comes from iPad. One third of all iOS revenue comes from iPad. And one third of that third comes from the US. So if you're wondering whether you should optimize on iPad or not, I mean, you can, the data is clearly telling you what direction you should go. Uh, if you look at countries like the UK at number four and Russia, literally half of their iOS revenue is coming from iPad. So 
hope, uh, hopefully you find this data as interesting as, uh, and fascinating as it was for me. So at App Any, one of the things we do is we, we try to do the heavy lifting for you. So let's say you're a social networking company. Um, you guys know what category uh, you guys are in uh, for iOS. It's, there's a social networking category, so that's where you would go. You, you, would, register, you, pub, you would publish there. But for Google Play, they've got uh, social, and they also have communication, ca uh, communication category. So you'll see social networking apps in both categories. So how do you, even let's say you, you do work with us and you have our data, how do you compare these two categories? It's, it's, you're really comparing apples to oranges. And what we do at App Annie is we're starting to come up with our own custom categories uh, and, um, and uh, we call them indexes. And here, what we've done is we've created a travel and transportation uh, a category. And so what you'll see here are the apps um, that we've, this is also custom, and, and if, if you want to take a look at this, it's definitely on our website. So this is for the month of July. Uh, you see Uber at number one, and you see the top 10. Uh, what's interesting about travel and transportation is Uber and Lyft represent two thirds of all downloads in the top 10. So it just shows you how popular uh, these, um, th these car sharing apps are. Uh, here's the same thing, except for uh, our general and business news category. Uh, you see Yahoo is consistently up at number one. I think, uh, uh, I think USA Today might be here. USA Today is also in the top 10. Uh, and you see the usual suspects. The only thing that uh, shot out uh, that was a little out of the ordinary was Pocket jumped into the top 10 in the, during the month of July. Uh, within a few days, we'll actually have August data, because we're always uh, one month uh, behind when it comes to uh, uh, releasing this data. When it comes to revenue, there's basically no, no change. Uh, one of the things we also do is we have a team uh, that uh, basically monitors the, the, the ecosystem and aggregates apps and publishers into a parent company. And then we allow you to view the total footprint of each parent company. So here, you'll, you'll see uh, there's a column called the, uh, uh, an apps column, which tells you, tells you the total number of apps each publisher has. And uh, for uh, downloads, you see the usual suspects. Uh, the one notable um, uh, company that jumped into the top 10 was Glue. Uh, does anybody know why Glue jumped into the top 10? Kardashian. It was Kardashian, yeah. Um, I don't really know what to think about that, but uh, they, in a, they jumped into the top 10 for the month of July. Uh, but uh, you definitely see the usual suspects here, uh, and also for revenue here. It, it should be no surprise. Now, when we look at apps, so when I say apps, I mean um, non-games. Uh, you see Facebook and Google as number one and two. Uh, Facebook and Google, in terms of, and these are companies, right, parent companies. When, in terms of apps, they actually represent six out of the top 10 apps for downloads. Uh, but uh, once again, this, this data is available um, on our website. Um, I'm going to be wrapping up here shortly, so I just wanted to say we, um, it's very fulfilling for me personally. We work with a lot of games, uh, gaming companies, and we work with, I think we're up to seven or eight of the top social networking companies. Uh, we work with them, and to see them so successful in the marketplace is, is very personally fulfilling. Um, and as far as categories go, navigation uh, has exploded uh, this summer. Uh, in Europe, and photography and education continue to make significant gains as, as an overall category. So to wrap up here, uh, growth. Uh, mobile is definitely where we see a lot of growth, and, and particularly uh, within mobile apps. If you were to launch today, you definitely need a strategy in the, in the top markets, you know, Japan, US, um, uh, China, Taiwan, and South Korea. Uh, once again, to recap, emerging markets, I know that monetization is not there today, but the downloads are there. Uh, monetization is definitely coming, and that's a trend we definitely do, seeing, do see. Uh, and when, as far as your uh, business model goes, f the data suggests freemium uh, is, is very effective, and we see a lot of companies going that direction. And lastly, uh, iPad optimization, should you do it, should you not? Um, the data clearly uh, tells us it is very effective for uh, not only share, but also for, um, but also for monetization. So with that, um, I, I think we got ourselves back on time here. 
Uh, if you have any questions for me, this is what we do. We, we, we are a market, mobile market data company. Uh, feel free to reach out to me personally. My name is Sam, um, and you can reach me at Sam at App Annie. A lot of this data is freely available on our website, should you want to see it. And also, uh, if, if you just reach out to me, I'll personally get back to you. Thank you very much.